You bet your life. Weekdays at 4.30 on ABC6. This is Southern New England's trusted news source, Good Morning Providence. Police in Pawtucket respond to a shooting in their city, the latest on the breaking news overnight. Plus, remembering Uvalde one year later, how a Texas community will remember those who lost their life at school. In a month after a UMass Dartmouth student was killed by a car on campus, we're hearing from the Bristol County DA about where the investigation stands. And good morning. Thank you for joining us. I'm Tara Lanezak. It's Wednesday, May 24th. Our six o'clock hour kicks off now. Let's send it over to meteorologist Skylar Spindler with a check of your forecast. Here's some of our weather headlines for today. It's going to be pretty nice for our entire day until we get to the evening hours. We got some scattered showers and a cold front that's going to move through. That's expected to move through the area after about eight o'clock tonight. We're going to be slightly cooler for tomorrow. Not too bad. But we do start to warm up and our weekend now is starting to look dry as we head into our holiday weekend. So as we look outside, sun's coming up a very pretty day, a little bit cool, 44 degrees in Providence. Winds are out of the west at about five miles an hour and we can see those temperatures around the area a little bit cooler along the South Shore area, a little 36 degrees in New Bedford. It is 36 in Falmouth, but in westerly 42 degrees this morning. So as we move through the morning hours by 10 a.m., we're going to be in the 60s and then moving into the afternoon. We're going to see those 70 degree temperatures popping up around the area. So we warm up nicely inland, but by 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock tonight, this front starts to move through and that this system starts to fall apart. That's what's going to give us those scattered showers after 8 o'clock tonight. Winds will stay to the south 5 to 15 miles an hour and we'll keep the Cape and coastal area in the 60s. I'm going to have more details on your forecast coming up in just a moment. All right, Skylar, we'll check back in with you in just a bit at 502 at 602 developing news out of Pawtucket. Large police presence required in Pawtucket last night in response to a shooting right on the side of the highway and in front of a Hampton Inn hotel. Good morning, Providence reporting on Trigelis in the newsroom with what we know this morning. Yanni. Sarah Lynn, well, still very limited details as to what happened. What we can tell you is there was a shooting on 95 by exit 41 in the Hampton Inn last night in Pawtucket. Now we want you to check out some video from the scene a little before midnight showing that pretty large police presence last night to the area and it all seemed to be centered around this car on the side of the road. Now we cannot confirm if anyone inside of that car is the victim of this shooting, but we did see police speaking to some witnesses on the side of the road over there. Now they did not provide any further details to us at this time on the status of the victim or if any arrest has been made. But again, we'll be sure to keep you updated as we continue to learn more on the shooting that happened in Pawtucket last night in the newsroom. Yanni Trigelis, ABC six news. Yanni, thank you. One year ago today, a lone gunman entered a Texas school in open fire, killing 19 students and two teachers. Later this morning, President Joe Biden will mark this somber anniversary. These 21 lives were lost in the Robb Elementary School shooting one year ago. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has ordered the state flag to be lowered to half staff to honor the victims, survivors, loved ones in the community affected by the rampage. In a year's time, they still don't have answers to simple questions that they should have gotten. I mean, I'm the mayor. I've been one year. I haven't got one briefing from anybody from day one. Not one. President Joe Biden, who along with the First Lady visited the area after the shooting, will speak about the tragedy from the White House Grand Staircase. If you have business in the area of Providence College, well, Providence Police will be conducting an active shooter drill. Providence College and Providence Police will hold these drills from 8 a.m. to around 2 p.m. During this time, neighbors in the surrounding community may hear loud noises and or may notice Providence PD and other public safety agencies responding to the PC campus. Signs will be placed around campus and remind people of this training exercise. Now, people should avoid the area if at all possible. In political news, this morning at 6.04, Congressman Cicilline delivers his farewell speech on the House floor. The six-term congressman will be leaving politics next week to take over as the CEO of the prestigious Rhode Island Foundation, the financial powerhouse nonprofit that supports hundreds of organizations in the state. Last night, the congressman began his speech by thanking the people of Rhode Island for sending him to Congress over and over all of these years. I would not be standing here today if not for the people of Rhode Island who placed their faith and trust in me to represent them in Congress. 
Every day over the past 12 years, I put my heart and soul into the work we do here to improve the lives of every Rhode Islander and to protect our great democracy. With Congressman Cicilline leaving Congress, there will now be a special election to fill the District 1 seat. The primary is the day after Labor Day in September, and then the general election will be in November. So at this point, the Democratic Party is packed with a slew of candidates seeking that nomination. One of those candidates running for Congress has a new political ad out today. Nick Audiello is releasing his digital ad, introducing himself to Rhode Island and officially launching his campaign. The 32-year-old is a former staffer to Governor Raimundo and served as an aide for Pete Buttigieg's 2020 presidential campaign. Audiello is the fourth Democrat to announce a campaign for the first district seat, along with Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos, State Senator Sandra Cano, and Alan Waters. Let's get you outside at 6.06 with our ABC6 Skycam. I know things are chilly right now, but I think Skylar has some good news for you about the temps today. Here's meteorologist Skylar Spindler with your forecast on the 6. Yeah, you know, we do have some good news because we are warming up nicely today. Very pretty skies this morning, but we do warm up very fast. So we are seeing some of those upper 30s around the area. 38 degrees in Taunton, 44 in Providence, 42 in Westerly, 43 in Newport right now. Winds are calm, but that's going to change a little bit later. Not too bad today. Winds will be out of the south about 5 to 15 miles an hour. But as you head further inland, we're going to see some of those 70s. We'll keep the Cape and the coastline in the 60s today. And expect those scattered showers to be moving in after 8 o'clock. That's because this cold front that's just located north of us is going to start to work its way through New York and Vermont and into our area. It moves very quickly through our area and it falls apart just as fast. So you can see as it starts to get into our area, that front line moves through and most of us probably won't even see any rain out of out of this entire system as it moves into the area. So I'm going to have more details on what the rest of the week looks like and what your holiday weekend will be bringing in just a few moments. Let's send you back outside again at 607 to Thurber's Ave right now. Things are moving along. Let's see travel times. All right, if you're traveling 95 northbound Attleboro to Canton, it's about 18 minutes right now, so you're okay if you're traveling that route. Okay, new details on two big fires that hit two different communities. Now, work has begun to fix the Kirkbray Country Club in Lincoln after fire damaged it Monday morning. The director of communications for the Rhode Island Golf Association says the cause of the fire is still being determined. Now, firefighters were called to the country club around 430 in the morning, even though they don't know how it started. Fire, fire officials, well, they know where it started in the loading dock area and then spread to the kitchen. They say the kitchen and roof suffered most of the damage there. In Plainville, the Hockamock area, YMCA says it won't be able to open its swim club this summer following the weekend fire damaging the clubhouse. They say the repairs are too extensive at this time and firefighters in Plainville put out flames at the YMCA family pool clubhouse on Berry Street Saturday. Now the popular swimming spot for locals was deemed a total loss. With the unofficial start of summer, it's quickly approaching this Memorial Day weekend. First responders in Pawtucket, well, they're testing out a new boat that was donated to the fire department by the Cooley Group. Mayor Grebian, the fire chief and city officials gathering at the Festival Pier boat ramp to test out the new boat and see how it performs in the water. It is 6.09 still to come on Good Morning Providence, a Portsmouth man accused brutally killing his landlord will take you inside the courtroom for his arraignment. Plus, Rhode Island joining the fight to stop the millions of robocalls pestering residents. What the Attorney General is doing to make that happen. You're watching Good Morning Providence on ABC6. We thank you. We'll be right back. This coffee went from last resort to first option. Now try a McCafe iced coffee with bold new flavor. Get any size for just $1.79, only at McDonald's. And now please welcome Anna Montoya. Hello there, fellow students. 
with so many options to try to help you slim down, it's like we're living in a weight loss revolution. But what do you need to know about weight loss drugs? This week, Dr. Jen is here with answers for you. Plus, the new Little Mermaid, Halle Bailey, and Harrison Ford, live on GMA This Week. While most drivers spend their lives going from point A to B, in America, we're all about point X. That's why our most versatile BMW X-Range vehicles are proudly manufactured right here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. The BMW X-Range, your next X-Venture starts here. Hurry in the BMW Memorial Day sales event and lease a BMW X3 for six a month. It's the most wonderful time of Non-drowsy Claritin-D knocks out your worst allergy symptoms, including nasal congestion, without knocking you out. Feel the clarity and make today the most wonderful time of the year. Claritin D. Our Memorial Day sale is here. And it isn't just good, it's Wickfit good. But what does that mean? Thanks to our digital price tags that check our competitors' websites every 15 minutes, we ensure you always have the lowest price on all your purchases, including brands like GE Profile and Cafe. Plus, 0% financing. Shopping local doesn't mean shopping expensive. We actually save you time and money. So don't wait. Shop our Memorial Day sale today, because no other deal can beat a Wickbid deal. I brought in Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein. Those who tried me felt more energy in just two weeks. Uh, Here, I'll take that. Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein, one gram of sugar. Enter the Nourishing Moments giveaway for a chance to win $10,000. You love a cold, refreshing soft drink from McDonald's. So we've got even colder ones. Now get any size frozen Coca-Cola for just $1.99, only at McDonald's. It is 6-11 happening now at a Portsmouth school. Gotta have the prompter there. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next story of Portsmouth man. Gruesome details revealed in Tuesday court about a murder in Portsmouth Monday night. 24 year old Jacob Murill telling cops he killed his landlord and he's now facing a first degree murder charge. ABC six reporter Daniel Coates has that story. Chains around his hands and feet. 24 year old Jacob Murill of Portsmouth appeared in Newport District Court Tuesday morning, alleged of killing his landlord. 50-year-old Jue Fang Wu of Tiverton during an altercation at a home off West Main Road Monday. He had struck Mr. Wu with a metal object during an argument. Uh, that strike resulted in Mr. Wu's death. Portsmouth police say they were initially called to check the residence for Wu because of worried relatives who hadn't seen him all day. Police spoke to Murill on scene at the time who said Wu had been at the property earlier on that day but had since left. Roughly two hours later, the suspect reached back out to police. Jacob Murill contacted our department and stated to the desk officer that he had struck and killed Mr. Wu. Authorities arrested Murill at the mobile gas station a half mile away from his home. The suspect then directing them to Wu's dead body. Officers located the body of the victim down a pathway in the rare wooded area behind 1722 West Main Road. The body had been wrapped in a tarp and held down in place by a section of wire fencing and other objects in the area. The landlord had severe head trauma and police believe the altercation took place in the garage. Murillo now held without bail, emotion spilling over outside the courthouse from those who came to see the man now facing first degree murder. And it's worth noting that Wu was denied an eviction request for that residence just yesterday by a judge. Stick with ABC6 on air and online for continued coverage. For now in Portsmouth, I'm Daniel Coates, ABC6 News. Half after a UMass Dartmouth student was hit and killed on campus, we're getting an update from the Bristol County DA on the investigation. It's been almost two months since a freshman was killed on campus after being hit by a car on Ring Road. Now, over that time, the school has implemented safety upgrades to the road, like speed monitors and speed bumps. While District Attorney Thomas Quinn wouldn't comment on specifics of the investigation and if speeding played a factor, he told ABC 6 News they've made significant progress over the past six weeks and are now awaiting final reports from the Accident Reconstruction Unit. I wouldn't comment on the specifics other than to say what's being reviewed is how the accident occurred 
and the manner of operation, which ultimately is what criminal charges would be based on. So that's, what, that's what's being reviewed, but you need the final uh, investigative aspect with respect to the accident itself to uh, be completed, and that's what we're waiting for. No timetable now for when this investigation will be complete, but the DA did say they hope to have it done as soon as reasonably possible. Rhode Island AG is joining 48 others around the country suing a telecommunications company. Now the AG says Avid Telecom rooted more than 25 million calls to Rhode Island residents. AG Peter Nerona says the robocalls were scams and telemarketers used spoofing numbers, sometimes even making it appear the calls were from law enforcement. The Social Security Administration, Amazon, DirecTV, and Medicare. Now more than 300 warnings were sent to Avid, but the AG says the company, well, they didn't stop. And now your ABC6 Storm Tracker meteorologist Skylar Spindler. We're looking outside. Sun's coming up. It's a little cool this morning, but we warm up later on. So here's a look at our marine forecast. We've already seen our low tide at 5:15 a.m., but our next low tide comes at 5:03 p.m. High tide is around lunchtime, so around noon today. Swells will be about two feet, and that wind coming across the water is going to be out of the east southeast at about five to 15 miles an hour. And we are expecting 14 hours and 48 minutes of sunshine today. So temperatures outside right now, we have some 30s in the area, 36 in New Bedford, but we are warming up. We'll be seeing these temperatures warm very quickly as we get into the morning hours. So as we get into the day, we're going to have 70s as we head further inland. We'll keep the Cape and the coastline in the 60s, but we do have some scattered showers moving in after 8 o'clock tonight. And that's just because we have a front that's going to move through with those showers, but it quickly falls apart, moves through very fast. The winds today will be out of the south 5 to 15 miles an hour until this front arrives. Then those winds will shift in out of the north, but it does make our way into our area. It stays more organized to the north of us. But again, once it starts to pass over into our area, it kind of just starts to fall apart. So we do have some dry air place and some winds moving in, so it kind of works in our favor a bit. But it does start to fall apart in the evening hours, quickly moving out. So it should be out of here by midnight. Our average for this time of year is 71 degrees. The record was set in 1956 for 92 degrees. We've seen about three and a half inches of rain for the month. So here's a look at the allergy forecast. So for today, oh, about medium high for today. Tomorrow, a little bit less and into Friday running about the same. So we're starting to see these allergies taper off a bit. We're heading into the end of the month. So the good news is we should be free and clear here in the next couple of weeks. So as we move into our holiday weekend, we do have a high pressure system that is sitting in place and it is going to park right over us. And that is good news because that will do use as a blocking mechanism to keep this system to the south of us, much to the south for the entire weekend. So for us, we're looking at that high pressure system on Saturday and Sunday, and it slowly works its way offshore on Monday. But again, good news because that keeps most of the rain away from us. So now we're expecting some scattered showers, possibly in the Tuesday evening hour. So now as we head through the weekend, looking pretty nice, and we're going to see those temperatures rising as well into the weekend. And even on Sunday, we can see the coastal area and the Cape hitting 70 degrees. So it's going to be a nice weekend shaping up to me. Not so bad after all. Looking gorgeous. All right, the excitement for the Rhode Island Shark license plate. All I have in my head right now is the Jaws theme song. Din, 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 din. All right, I'll stop. Okay, so they released the Atlantic Shark Institute plate for charity. They received over 5,000 orders. The Institute's executive director says the orders are now well beyond the state's 600 minimum order. The DMV will begin distributing those later this month. It's 619 still to come on Good Morning Providence. The new investment signaling economic growth at a local shipyard and how local high school students will help build the next generation of submarines. Coming up after this. Find deals every week and everyday savings with all the quality, all the value, all the time. The quality you crave and savings you can count on. Stop and shop. Feed the moment. Summer is here, and with a new Toyota, you can do all your favorite beach activities, like spike ball, whitewater rafting, 
shrimp boils, Ooh. wade fishing, or hanging with the locals. You can say that again. You could save up to $1,200 with affordable 3.99% financing on an all-wheel drive Camry. And every Camry comes with two years, no cost maintenance and more. Your summer starts here. Toyota, let's go places. 110 Grill, the perfect spot for lunch or a night out in Providence. Located downtown, 110 Grill offers delicious signature drinks, awesome apps, giant sandwiches, and specialty entrees in a modern, relaxed atmosphere. Our kitchen is certified allergy friendly and our entire menu can be made gluten free. Go to 110grill.com to plan your visit or sign up for the loyalty program for special rewards. Mobile, we know most mobile plans treat you like another sheep in the flock, forcing you to pay for a whole heap of data like everyone else, even if a whole heap isn't what you need. Now that's more like it. Find plans that fit you based on the data you need for as low as $15 a gig with no annual contract while running on the network with unbeatable 5G reliability. Cox Mobile, we're different because you're different week, stop and shop for great deals. Lean ground beef or patties are $2.99 per pound. Lay's potato chips or Lay's kettle chips are $1.97 each when you buy three. And strawberries, raspberries, or blackberries are buy two, get one free. Stop and shop. Feed the moment. With so much at stake, more Americans turn to ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one newscast across all of television. And ABC6 News with Tiffany Murphy and John DeLuca, Southern New England's trusted news team. Watch ABC6 News first at fourth immediately after Hot Bench. It's 621. Good morning. Providence continues with news affecting the local economy. General Dynamics hosting a ceremony last night for Rhode Island high school students who have signed on for careers at Electric Boat. Now, Senator Jack Reed was on hand at Coventry High School as graduating seniors from 22 schools across the Ocean State walked the stage, accepting certificates as they were recognized for their commitment to a shipbuilding career. They should have plenty of work ahead of them. All right, and the U.S. Navy has upgraded a contract with General Dynamic Shipyards for construction on its Virginia-class submarines. The modification would give Electric Boat over a billion dollars to go towards new materials and systems for the next generation of attack subs. Effects of the contract are expected to be felt across all of the Electric Boat Yards, including its manufacturing facility at Quonset Point. Netflix, well, it's moving forward on its banning of password sharing. And here in the U.S., it starts today. ABC's Lionel Moyes has more. Do you love me? I love you! The days of sharing your account with your bestie to binge Bridgerton or Stranger Things are over. What'd you say? Say it again! I dare you to say it again! After warning for quite some time, Netflix is officially cracking down on password sharing. I don't like this, Christy, wake up! The streaming giant sending this reminder to customers that says a Netflix account is for use by one household. Everyone living in that household can use Netflix wherever they are, at home, on the go, on holiday, and take advantage of new features like transfer profile and manage access and devices. Netflix is going to be looking at users' IP addresses to determine where they're sitting at any particular moment, not to gather geographic data for other purposes. At one point, the company estimated 100 million people worldwide were freeloading using someone else's password. For someone who lives outside your household, their profile can be converted to a new membership that they pay for. Or you can shell out an additional $7.99 a month to keep them on your account. Analysts have long said this could set a new standard. Whatever Netflix decides to do, probably a lot of other uh, services are going to emulate that in some way. Customers wasting no time giving their take. This is so annoying. This is horrible. This is going to make their subscribers drop, but also have their subscribers increase because some people are just going to pay for the subscription because they're going to be like, whatever, I just need to watch Netflix. And some people are just going to be like, tell when Netflix buy, like I'm out. Netflix told shareholders earlier this year that the crackdown has actually been successful in a number of other markets and they are not worried about people canceling. In Canada, for example, the membership base soared higher than before the crackdown 
as customers started setting up their own accounts or adding a member. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. Let's send it over to meteorologist Skylar Spindler for a check of your forecast. If you're headed off to the bus stop, warming up will be in the low 50s. And by the time you come home, we are looking at those upper 60s. Some of us even in the 70s this afternoon. So here's a look at that future cast as we move through the morning. We'll be in the 60s by 10 a.m. And look at how quickly these temperatures warm up. We have a lot of sunshine. You see those upper 60s around the area before we get into the lunch hour. But by the time we get into about the 4 o'clock hour, this front will start to slowly approach the area. Now as it gets into the area, it quickly passes through and will fall apart. So expect some scattered showers after 8 o'clock and some of you guys won't even see anything at all. Winds will be out of the south 5 to 15 miles an hour for much of the day until that front moves through and they switch in from the north. But again, we'll be mostly sunny today, so still not a bad day after all. And then we do have that front. Like I said, it moves through and it passes through extremely quickly. So cooler temperatures for tomorrow. We're looking at those 60s and then we start to warm back up and looking at a nice weekend for our holiday weekend. And it's 626. Let's take a look outside with our ABC6 sky cam. That was Washington Bridge. And if you're traveling, let's take a look over here. So 195 westbound state line to the 95 split. It's about three minutes. 24 northbound Fall River to Route 93. We're in the yellow, so moving slow now. The time is ticked up. It's about 41 minutes. If you're traveling that route, please give yourself some time. And as always, everyone, drive safe out there. And still to come on Good Morning Providence, why a Cranston state lawmaker wants to put a stop to the expanded abortion coverage act signed into law last week. Plus, we have movement on our Bristol County bear tracker, where it was spotted this morning and where officials lost sight of it. You're watching Good Morning Providence on ABC6. Sit tight. We'll be right back. Ah, the McDonald's breakfast bagel sandwich. A fluffy egg, two slices of cheese, plus your choice of a steak patty, bacon, or sausage, all in a toasted bagel. Enjoy yours today. We're kicking off Bob's summer of savings in all my stores coast to coast this Memorial Day weekend. Celebrating over 30 years of furniture fun in my now 165 stores across the United States. So come join the party because I've got new collections you won't want to miss and treats for the whole fam. Plus get Bob's discount on my highly rated furniture, mattresses and more with financing options to fit your budget. Get your home summer ready during Bob's summer of savings this Memorial Day weekend. I've saved you a seat at the party and a sofa and a bed and a We're reinventing our network for total confidence and complete control. Fast, reliable, perfectly orchestrated. The United States Postal Service. If something doesn't feel right to you, call Attorney Odoo, a new face to the law. You've got questions, he's got answers. Injured? Don't let it linger. Bad employer? Contact your lawyer. Every case our firm handles starts with a free consultation. So call today. I started screening for colon cancer because of my late husband, Jay. I wish he could have seen our daughter, Ellie, get married on the best day of her life. But colon cancer took him from us, like it's taken so many others. That's why I've made it my mission to talk about getting screened and ask people to share their reasons why. I screen for my growing family. Being with them means everything to me. I screen for my girls. They're always surprising me. I screen for my son. I'm his biggest fan. If you're 45 or older and at average risk, it's time to screen. Today, there are more screening options than ever before, including Cologuard. Cologuard is non-invasive and finds 92% of colon cancers, even in early stages. It's not for those at high risk. False positive and negative results may occur. Ask your provider if Cologuard is right for you. Everyone has a reason to screen for colon cancer. If you're 45 or older, get started at missiontoscreen.com. Ah, the McDonald's breakfast bagel sandwich. A fluffy egg, two slices of cheese, plus your choice of a steak patty, bacon, or sausage, all in a toasted bagel. Enjoy yours today. This is Southern New England's trusted news source, Good Morning Providence. 
Welcome back to Good Morning Providence. I'm Tarolyn Azak. It's 629. Let's send it over to meteorologist Skylar Spindler. She has your forecast at 630. Here's a look at our weather headlines as we are headed into this midweek. We have some scattered showers moving in this evening, but we do have a very nice day in store, so expect a lot of sunshine and warming temperatures. But after 8 o'clock, that front will move through. It's going to bring some passing quick moving showers. Very scattered. Most of us probably won't even see anything, especially if you're along the Cape area. Slightly cooler for tomorrow, but we start to warm up and we are looking like we have a nice dry weekend ahead of us. So here's a look at the outside. Very pretty this morning as the sun's been coming up. 45 degrees in Providence. Winds are out of the west southwest at about three miles an hour. And here's those temperatures this morning. A couple of cool patches around the area. 36 degrees in New Bedford. We got some of those uh, mid to upper 30s along the Cape and into the South Shore area. Moving inland 42 in Smithfield. It's 42 in Westerly right now. So as we move into the morning hours, about 10 a.m., we're going to be in the 60s already. So you can kind of see we really start to warm up nicely because we got a lot of sunshine today. And as we head further inland, some of you might even see those mid 70s around the area. So very nice day in store. So definitely get out and try to enjoy it while you can. But as we head into the after rush hour period, we're really looking at this rain starting to move in. So expect it to move in by 7, 8 o'clock, but it does fall apart very quickly as it gets into our area. So for the day, we're going to have mostly the winds will be out of the south about 5 to 15 miles an hour until that front moves through. Then they switch in out of the north for tonight. But we'll keep that Cape and coastal area in the 60s and temperatures quite nice for the day. And we'll have more details on your forecast coming up in just a moment. Skylar, thank you. We'll see you in a bit. And good morning, Providence. Following developing news out of Pawtucket this morning, where a large police presence was needed in response to a shooting right on the side of the highway and in front of a Hampton Inn hotel. Good morning, Providence reporter Yanni Tregellis joins us in the newsroom with more on this story. Yanni, what can you tell us? Sarah Linwell, very limited details this morning as to what happened last night. But what we can say is there was a shooting on 95 by exit 41 in the Hampton Inn in Pawtucket. Now we want to give you a look here at video from the scene last night, just a little before midnight, showing the pretty large police presence there by the highway. And it all seemed to be centered around this car on the side of the road. Now this morning, we cannot confirm if anyone inside of that car is the victim of this shooting. But, but what we did see is police speaking to some witnesses on the side of the road. Now again, police not providing any further details at this time as to the status of the victim or if any arrests have been made in connection to this shooting. Again, we're continue to look into this and keep you updated as we continue to learn more throughout the day. In the newsroom, Yanni Tregellis, ABC6 News. Yanni, thank you for that. Today marks one year since the gunman took the lives of 19 students and two teachers at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. After that deadly mass shooting, ABC News made the commitment to stay and chronicle the community's journey. ABC's Melissa Adan has some of their stories. Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas is the site of one of the deadliest school shootings in American history. After 19 innocent children and two beloved teachers were killed here last year. Since then, families have been fighting for greater transparency, accountability, and to raise the minimum legal age to buy an assault-style rifle in Texas to 21. So like another kid won't go through what me and my friends went through. 10 year old Caitlin Gonzalez, who survived the mass shooting in Uvalde, now travels the country, uniting with other survivors as they call for change. I shouldn't have to be here speaking. I'm only 10 years old, but I am because my friends have no voice no more. Students and teachers inside Robb Elementary spent more than an hour trapped inside their school as a lone gunman took over two classrooms armed with an AR style rifle he purchased days after he turned 18. That long delay still causing agony and outrage in the community as law enforcement waited 77 minutes before they breached classrooms 111 and 112, finally killing the gunman. Inside classroom 109 was Daniel Garza. All we heard was like gunshots, everybody was scared. When the cops broke the window, the sun like shined in the classroom. Daniel is among the survivors who is now in fifth grade, but the community mourns the loss of the 19 other kids who had so many hopes and dreams, but won't get to realize them. Nine-year-old Jackie Casares dreamed of going to Paris 
Tess Mata, who at 10 years old loved the Houston Astros and playing softball. Fourth grader Lexi Rubio wanted to be a lawyer and was very studious. Lexi's mom getting her artwork tattooed on her arm. I was excited to have on me a piece of art that Lexi drew. Not many people know Lexi as an artist, but she was. It's us and it says the best mom and I love my mom and by Lexi. Melissa Don, ABC News, Uvalde, Texas. At 635, staying with political news on Good Morning Providence, attorneys for former President Donald Trump are requesting a meeting with U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland. Now, it's about the investigation into Trump's alleged mishandling of classified documents in efforts to obstruct the 2020 election. In a letter sent to Garland, Trump's attorney said the meeting is to discuss the ongoing injustice against the former president. This comes as special counsel Jack Smith appears to be in the final stretch of his investigations. And we have headlines from the State House on Smith Hill. We are hearing from State Rep Charlene Lima, now one of the Democrats who voted against the expanded abortion bill that was just signed into law last week. Representative Lima is asking the Attorney General to put an immediate stop on the Equality in Abortion Coverage Act, calling it an unconstitutional power grab. Lima says it violates First Amendment rights to religious freedom, and the law funds abortions for state employees and those who rely on Medicaid. I don't believe it's constitutional for them to be forced under the Religious Freedom Act, under the Rhode Island Constitution, that they must be forced to use their taxpayer dollars to pay for something they're fundamentally against. We need to protect the people's rights under the Constitution. Representative Lima said she hasn't heard back from the AG's office just yet. If he doesn't take up the case, though, she says she's going to ask the speaker to request a state Supreme Court advisory opinion on the constitutionality of the bill. Let's get you outside at 636 with a shot of our ABC 6 Sky Cam out there. And the temperatures, they're warming up. Ben Schuyler again has some good news about our Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, we have some uh, good news headed our way as we look outside. A couple of clouds out there, but we're going to be pretty much sunny for most of the day today. And right now we're seeing some pockets of cool air, 36 degrees in New Bedford, 36 in Falmouth. But as we look a little further and a little warmer, it's 42 in Smithfield, 47 in Block Island and 43 in Newport. Winds are calm this morning, so here's what we can expect for the day. So mostly sunny today. We'll keep the Cape and the coastline in the 60s. And then we have that front that's going to move through this evening and that's going to bring just some scattered showers to the area because it does start to fall apart as it gets into our area. So expect that to move through say after seven eight o'clock tonight so temperature wise you can see that range will be warming up inland some of us will even be into those 70s today so winds will be out of the south five to 15 miles an hour until that front arrives so here's those forecasted highs for today so look at some of these temperatures around the area so again we can see those 70s and then we're going to keep that cape and coastline in the 60s today the water temperature is 56 degrees so here's that setup there's that front line to the north of us that's going to work its way through New York and into Vermont, New Hampshire, and then finally getting down to us. But it falls apart by the time it gets to our area, so you can kind of see it's going to be mostly scattered. So areas along the Cape, you may not even see anything at all from this. So I'm going to have more details on your seven day forecast and our weekend outlook coming up in just a moment. Skylar, thank you. We'll see you in a bit. Now we are tracking the bear that's making its way around Bristol County. Check out this incredible viewer video from New Bedford. This was taken in the city's north end. A viewer named Sylvia sent up the clip of the bear walking right out from under her deck. Wow, you can see someone doing yard work just avoiding that bear encounter. This isn't even the first time we've seen the bear. It's been spotted in Taunton, Fall River, Mansfield, Dighton, and Dartmouth, just to name a few. New Bedford police say it was first seen on Old Plainville Road yesterday before heading toward the airport. Animal control officers were out looking for it yesterday and are still on alert. It's 639 still to come on Good Morning Providence as Washington struggles to reach a debt limit deal. A key hang up in the negotiations is turning out to be work requirements. What's needed to make a deal happen? You're watching Good Morning Providence on ABC 6. Happy Wednesday to you. We'll be right back.
Call the Car Rack Pro at 1-800-LAW-1222. I'm attorney Rob Levine, the heavy hitter. Dust and debris can leave your carpets, upholstery, and more looking dull and dirty. Stanley Steamer certified technicians can remove the buildup and restore your home to a cleaner and healthier space. For a fresh start this season, call or go online to schedule your deep cleaning with Stanley Steamer today. If your internet comes from T-Mobile, you should know it's just phone internet, not home internet. Cox internet is faster and has more reliable download speeds than T-Mobile 5G home internet. Cox keeps you up to speed, especially during peak hours when you need it most. So don't get phone internet, get real home internet from Cox. Our Memorial Day sale is here, and it isn't just good, it's Wickfit good. But what does that mean? Thanks to our digital price tags that check our competitors' websites every 15 minutes, we ensure you always have the lowest price on all your purchases, including the full line of Frigidaire appliances. Plus, 0% financing. Shopping local doesn't mean shopping expensive. We actually save you time and money. So don't wait. Shop our Memorial Day sale today, because no other deal can beat a Wickfit deal. Summer is here, and with an exciting new Toyota, you can take a trip to the beach, the city, the mountains, the desert, Ooh, the bayou. I think I'm sinking. Definitely sinking. You could save up to $1,500 with affordable 3.99% financing on a four-wheel drive Tacoma. And every Tacoma comes with two years no-cost maintenance and more. Your summer starts here. Toyota, let's go places. Friday night. Congratulations on your Oscar. Yay! <laughs> a joyous and emotional celebration. What was it like to hand that Oscar to your mom? Asians in Hollywood have a lot to celebrate this year for damn sure. Friday night on ABC. Now's the time for cleaner indoor air with an air duct cleaning from Stanley Steamer. You've known us for carpet cleaning, but we've been cleaning air ducts for over 20 years. We do things the right way, cleaning your entire system. So if you need an air duct cleaning, call 1-800-STEAMER today. Welcome back, 642. Now to the nation's debt ceiling negotiations. President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy say talks have been productive, but McCarthy adds there's still no progress. Time is quickly running out with critical funding for Social Security, the nation's defense, and overall health of the global economy on the line. ABC's Lindsay Watts has more. Negotiators will be back at it again today, trying to hammer out a debt ceiling deal as the country edges closer to financial crisis. We could still finish this by June 1st. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy staying optimistic, but privately conceding to his Republican members that they are nowhere near a deal yet. The White House insisting talks have been productive, but won't point to specific progress. Look, if everyone is working in good faith uh, and uh, recognizes that uh, uh, no one is going to get, either side is going to get exactly what they want, we'll get it done. The stalemate is over federal spending. Republicans want to roll it back and Democrats do not. Republicans also demanding that Biden impose new work requirements for those receiving federal aid. The president equally firm in pushing for tax increases on the wealthiest Americans and large companies. America has never failed to pay its debts and the consequences would be disastrous. The heads of military's Joint Chiefs is now sounding the alarm, warning a default would have an immediate and dramatic impact on readiness, with troops going unpaid. The potential here could be uh, catastrophic for us, and I don't say that lightly. A default also means millions of Americans may not be able to pay their bills on time. It's very stressful. Give me a heart attack. With Social Security and other government benefits at risk, older Americans would bear the brunt of a default. I paid into Social Security and I paid into Medicare, and now they're trying to take it away. Worth noting, Republicans raised the debt ceiling three times under President Trump with no conditional spending cuts. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington. Millions of Americans are struggling to pay their energy bills, according to the National Energy Assistant Directors Association. Nearly 20 million households were behind on utility payments as of March. They owe a total of $19.5 billion. Now that's $4 billion higher than a year ago. And the high cost of cooling homes during the summer is expected to make the problem worse. 
The union representing employees at the nation's largest shipping company threatening to walk off the job. UPS Teamsters members are demanding a larger share of the record profits the company has seen since the pandemic. And if they do that strike, it could cause a massive disruption to e-commerce, not to mention higher prices and slower service for customers. The last strike back in 1997 brought the company to its knees. UPS ships about a quarter of all packages delivered in the U.S. every day. And now to the life-threatening typhoon barreling towards the U.S. territory of Guam. The island's more than 150,000 residents have prepared for days as the area's strongest storm in decades arrives, bringing a triple threat of wind, rain and storm surge. Here's ABC's Andrea Fujii. Overnight, the U.S. territory of Guam has been bracing for a direct hit from Typhoon Mawar, likely the worst storm to hit the island in decades. As the storm closed in, winds of up to 140 miles per hour were forecasted. The storm capable of hitting with the force of a Category 4 hurricane. You want to stay in the most safe place in your house away from windows. Ahead of the storm, the governor issuing a mandatory evacuation of low-lying areas, telling residents to seek shelter. I am very concerned and worried about your safety, and I want you to take these warnings seriously. President Biden approving an emergency declaration as the military moved planes and ships away from the island. Typhoon Mawar expected to be the strongest storm to impact the island since a super typhoon hit in 2002. That storm causing $700 million in damage. Back on the mainland, just north of Houston, several storms snapping power lines and downing trees in the city of Conroe. A two-story home under construction collapsing. Two men were killed in the collapse and seven were injured. Family members identifying one of the two men killed, Brian Aguilar. No, mi hijo era un muchacho humilde. His father telling our station he had just turned 21. In nearby Huntsville, storms damaged more than 20 homes. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. And now, your ABC 6 Storm Tracker meteorologist, Skylar Spiller. We're looking outside. It is very pretty this morning. A little bit cool in some areas, but sun's coming up. And here's what we're looking at for the marine forecast. So our low tide was already at 515 this morning. The next low tide comes at 503 p.m. High tide 1210 today, and the swells will be about two feet. And those winds will be coming across the water about the east southeast at about 5 to 15 miles an hour. And for today, we can expect 14 hours and 48 minutes of sunshine if you're heading out to do a little fishing or maybe a little sailing today. Temperatures around the area this morning. Like I said, we've got a few little cool spots. 36 degrees in New Bedford, 38 in Taunton, but a little bit warmer as we start to head inland. It's 47 degrees in Block Island, so here's what we can expect for our day. So we're pretty much going to be mostly sunny for the entire day. Now, by the time we get into the evening hours, we do have some scattered showers moving through. That's going to be moving through with a cold front. So expect that to get into our area after, say, 7 o'clock. So it'll start to push on through around 8, but quickly moves on out. Winds today will be out of the south about 5 to 15 miles an hour until that front arrives. So here is that front line much to the north of us making its way through New York this afternoon, moving through our northern states, so moving through Vermont. And then by the time it gets to us, it starts to fall apart. So it's much more organized this evening through the day, but when it gets to us, it just starts to fall apart in our area. So by the time it gets to the Cape and the coastline area, you guys probably see some scattered showers here and there, and some of you may not even see anything at all. So allergy cast for the next couple of days. We are still running about medium high. So for today and tomorrow, Friday and even Saturday, we do start to see it trending downward as we get into the weekend. So we're getting into that last stretch of May. So those should be starting to finally start to level off now. Now moving into our weekend, we do have a high pressure system that is going to be parked just over our area and that is going to be providing some sunshine for us and blocking this low pressure system that's to the south. So as we move into Sunday again, it just really stays in place over us, keeping this system much more to the south. But by the time we get into Monday, still looking pretty good. But Tuesday, that makes way for some of those showers to start to make it into our area. So we're really not expecting any of this to get into the area until later in Tuesday. So here's a look at our forecast. So 
for tomorrow. A little bit cooler will be in those mid 60s, a bit of a cooler coast, but then we start to warm up on Friday. We're looking pretty nice as we get into our weekend. We'll be into the 70s and even on Sunday, our coastal and Cape area is going to see those 70 degree temperatures as well. And then by the time we get into our Monday Memorial Day holiday, we are looking at those upper 70s and then rounding out the end of this forecast, possibly seeing some 80 degree temperatures by the time we get into Tuesday. I like the sound of that. All right, thank you, Skyler. It's 650, a game show contestant who joked about his marriage on TV is now charged with murdering his wife. ABC's Andrea Fuji has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a family feud contestant on trial for murder. This was Timothy Bleefnick in 2020, appearing on an episode of Family Feud. What's the biggest mistake you made at your wedding? Honey, I love you, but said I do. Oh. <laughs> not my mistake. Not my mistake. I love my wife. I'm going to get in trouble for that, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> now he stands accused of murdering the woman he said I do to. Prosecutors allege Bleefnick shot the mother of his three boys 14 times in 2021, while the estranged couple was amidst a turbulent divorce. You no, know, the last night the Becky's wife was sent in fear pain and terror. So what is Bleefnik's defense strategy? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look on Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. And we'll be back with a look at your news on the go. Plus, Skyler's coming on back with your on-the-go forecast. You're watching Good Morning Providence on ABC6. This week on GMA, we are popping up somewhere in America. Three mornings, three different cities, surprising three small businesses with a paid forward boost to kick off their summer. Where will we go? This is so good. Good Morning America is up in your business. GMA 7A this week. Watch ABC 6 News first at fork immediately after Hot Bench. It's not a small check. It's um... appropriate. That's why you should take the check now. It's a text from D'Olivera and Associates. Call D'Olivera and Associates on the Hurt Line right now. And now please welcome Anna Montoya. Hello there, fellow students. When you use the finest quality materials, beautiful takes on a whole new meaning. Outdoor Living Materials is proud to provide its customers with the very best by carrying Keystone Hardscapes. Keystone Hardscapes is the premier hardscape solution for pavers, walls, and more. If you've dreamed of a breathtaking landscaped backyard that will continue to look beautiful year after year, rely on Keystone's trusted wall solutions, patio stones, and outdoor living elements to make your dream a reality. Get up to 30% off everything at Raymore and Flanagan's Memorial Day Sale. We made it easy to upgrade your style with savings on everything throughout the store. Go ahead, buy that dream sofa, gorgeous bedroom set, perfect dining table, stylish outdoor furniture, and more. Save on top mattress brands and sleep better tomorrow night. Or pay later with financing with no interest for 72 months. Unbeatable Memorial Day deals only while they last at Raymore and Flanagan. I brought in Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein. Those who tried me felt more energy in just two weeks. Uh, Here, I'll take that. Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein, one gram of sugar. Enter the Nourishing Moments giveaway for a chance to win $10,000. You're injured in an accident, and now the insurance company is up to their usual tricks. Don't accept less. Call a law firm that demands top dollar for your injuries. Call the Oliver and Associates on the Hurt Line right now. Welcome back at 6.53, time for your news on the go. All your headlines, weather and traffic. A large police presence required in Pawtucket last night in response to a shooting right on the side of the highway and in front of a Hampton Inn hotel. Check out video from the scene last night a little before midnight showing the pretty large presence by police to the area and it all seemed to be centered around this car that you're seeing on the side of the road. Cannot confirm if anyone was inside of that car. And, or if the victim was shot, but we did see police speaking to some witnesses on the side of the road. Police not providing any further details at this time on the status of the victim or if any arrest has been made. 
Congressman Cicilline delivering his farewell speech on the House floor. The sixth term congressman will be leaving politics next week to take over as the CEO of the prestigious Rhode Island Foundation, the financial powerhouse nonprofit that supports hundreds of organizations in the state. Last night, the congressman began his speech by thanking the people of Rhode Island for sending him to Congress over and over all of these years. And work has begun to fix the Kirkbury Country Club in Lincoln after fire damaged it Monday morning. The director of communications for the Rhode Island Golf Association says the cause of the fire still being determined. And firefighters, they were called to the country club around 430 in the morning. Even though they don't know how it started, fire officials know where it started. It started in the loading dock area and then spread to the kitchen. They say the kitchen and roof suffered most of the damage. In Plainville, the Hockamock area YMCA says it won't be able to open its swim club this summer following the weekend fire damaging the clubhouse. They say the repairs are too extensive at this time and firefighters in Plainville, they put out the flames at the YMCA family pool clubhouse on Berry Street Saturday. The popular swimming spot for locals was deemed a total loss. And we're learning more about the two coyote-esque dogs that were running loose in Warwick last month. The wolf hybrids were finally caught and transported to a wolf dog rescue in Ohio after a doggy DNA test. The results confirming their identities. The sisters, well, they have a little difference between them, but they're about half gray wolf. 20 or so percent German Shepherd in Alaskan Malamute. In a few points, Siberian Husky. Before you head out the door, let's take a look at the roads. Taking a look at 95 at Branch there. Things are moving along. Let's see the travel times. All right, if you're traveling 95 north bar, northbound Attleboro to Canton, it's about 26 minutes. Let's get a check with Skylar Spindler of your Wednesday forecast. If you're headed out to the bus stop, it's going to be 50 degrees and we're warming up today. So we're going to see those temperatures in those upper 60s and some 70s as you start to head home. So here's that future cast. We'll be in the 60s after 10 a.m. Warming up into those uh, upper 60s and 70s around the area. But this afternoon we do have that uh, front starting to move through. So expect some scattered showers after 8 o'clock tonight. We'll keep the 60s in the, co the case in the Cape and the coastal area. But here's that front that's going to move through. And again, like I said, it starts to move through. We'll get some cooler temperatures afterwards, but it falls apart. So for tomorrow, 65 degrees by the time we get into Friday, 68 and looking at a nice weekend for your holiday weekend. All right, Skylar, thank you. That's all for now. Good Morning America is coming up next. Be sure to join us for ABC6 News at noon and for the latest news, traffic and weather anytime. ABC6.com is always on. Have a wonderful Wednesday. We'll see you back here next time. You bet your life. Weekdays at 4.30 on ABC6. Hi, I'm ABC6 News anchor Tiffany Murphy. I know how hectic life can be, so get to see 11 minutes at 11 o'clock, and we'll give you tonight's breaking headlines, updates on today's top stories. 11 minutes of non-stop commercial-free news and weather. Everything you need to know to get ready for tomorrow. Join me for 11 at 11, only on ABC6. It's the moment. Non-drowsy Claritin knocks out symptoms from over 200 allergens without knocking you out. Feel the clarity and make today the most wonderful time of the year. Live Claritin clear. Makala Concrete is the area's best available source for quality concrete, and we're proud of our legacy. Recognized as a leader in the industry because of our quality workmanship, commitment to excellence, and a large fleet of modern trucks. Makala Concrete gets the job done, and we get it done right. Call us today. Makala Concrete. Isabella's Boutique in North Providence is an exclusive wig store for women. Proudly celebrating seven years in business, Isabella's prides itself on catering to women with medical hair loss, including chemotherapy and radiation treatments, alopecia, and any type of thinning hair or hair loss. Isabella's boasts an endless selection of head coverings, scarves, hats, and accessories. For the highest quality wigs at the lowest boutique prices, call Isabella's Boutique for your private appointment today. Stay tuned for Good Morning America, starting in 60 seconds, with the nation's top headlines and news from around the world, live from Times Square in New York. Robbie, check this. Nice. My turn. Game on. Let's do this. Ready? Behind the back. No look. All right. Let me show you how it's done. Now 
now I know why they call you the heavy hitter. Injured in a car wreck? Call me, attorney Rob Levine. Call 1-800-LAW-1222. Information dismissed. Even though it was based on bank records directly from the bank. Subpoenas ignored. Every time we turn over a rock, there's more possible allegations that need to be investigated. And the team to investigate tax evasion disbanded. That itself is a form of obstruction of justice. A look at the roadblocks 